before we get the video started, we just ran into a, a lost wallet. And I'm trying to find information on the lady. girl. It's a lady. Just uh, call back this number. Yeah, no problem. Well, success. We found the, the owner. We found the person. We found the owner. Carlos. Um, yeah, she said that she was gonna come, and then uh, she'll call back this number. All right, cool. Yeah. We yeah. were all dressed up. Yeah. yeah, I try to do the whole thing for me, like dieting. I don't want to feel like I'm on a diet. So what I try to do is create a lot of volume, a lot of volume food. So I'm going to show you what kind of foods create that pretty much, or what you can do to create that volume. A really good thing that's going to be really high in volume is kale. Any greens usually is going to be high in, high in volume and low in calories. Um, kale really, really big. You probably get 100 grams. That's going to be worth three to six carbs at most. And 100 grams, that's a lot of kale. Um, if you really don't like the taste of kale, I recommend just putting it in a protein shake and just drink it up. It's full of micronutrients. It's really important uh, if you're dieting because whenever you're eating less food, you're getting less micronutrients. So really important to get your greens. Broccoli is another good thing. It's probably one of my favorites. I wasn't a big fan of kale, although I did eat it in my protein shakes. But I always did broccoli and chicken or just broccoli and tuna. Another thing was spinach. Really big on spinach also. Asparagus. I had it every once in a while. It's good. Uh, I grilled it on the skillet, put some sea salt on it, and sometimes some butter. It was probably boil it. Um, that's what I usually do with it. I'll boil it and just salt it mostly, but uh, just throw it in with my chicken. It's, I guess it's got good effects. Uh, I've heard it cleans your urine system. Yeah. Your urinary tract system, or your urinary, urinary system. Did you add it? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Another good thing that I like to snack on is carrots, baby carrots. So although they can, at least for me, I probably ate like 30 carbs, 40 carbs with the carrots. That's like pretty much an entire bag of carrots. I usually go for pop size sweet potatoes, man. It's uh, I usually bake them in the oven for uh, 200, 200 degrees Fahrenheit for about 40 minutes. They're a really good source of carbohydrates, slow digesting. Another thing is uh, a lot of people I know whenever they eat sweet potatoes, they get bloated. Uh, for me, it used to happen, but now it doesn't. So of course, you know, sweet potatoes are good, micronutrients. I mean, they taste good. They're all healthy and all that stuff. But if they're making you feel bloated, um, or if anything's making you eat, I mean, like get bloated, uh, why eat it? You know, you can always find substitutions. <laughs> All right, guys, the only thing about bodybuilding on a budget, carbs are cheap, but it's the protein that gets you sometimes. What I like to do is I like to buy about a four pound bag of tilapia, which is about 21 grams of protein per filet. So I use this, this was a staple in my, uh, my competition prep, it helped me lean out really quick, and I do recommend it if you're on a budget. What I follow is flexible dieting, which is uh, if it fits your macros, and the name for it. Really good things, really good snacks are these little sandwiches, ice cream sandwiches, they're 150 calories each. One of my favorite flavors of that is uh, Snickerdoodle. So you're getting six sandwiches for about $4, it's really not that expensive, it's less than a dollar a sandwich. And they're pretty big, like you can see here the size of that, it's pretty much the size of the real ice cream. If you're dieting, if you're on the low carb diet, you want to stay away from rice. Usually, it's not gonna get. It's not really high volume. Oh, 40, 40 carbs of rice is pretty much equivalent to like five or six salads of like kale and you know cabbage and all that stuff. So, for me, I really didn't do rice. The only time I would do rice is on my refeed days or on the days that I have really high carbs, like uh, my back and leg days. And I increase my carbs by 50, so I just won't have a cup of rice or brown rice. But one that I do suggest is the, the generic brand versus the Success or Uncle Ben's. I tried all of them. I really didn't taste it different. As far as tuna, I really don't like Starkiss. I'll go with Chicken of the Sea. That one has weirdly a chicken-like flavor to it. I would recommend that. If you haven't tried it, uh, give it a shot. All these are pretty good also if you're on the go or if you don't have anything to mix the tuna with because I, I don't eat these kinds of tuna plain. I add like I add a barbecue sauce or maybe even a mustard. Well, definitely mustard, maybe barbecue sauce. And if I don't have any of that stuff, I'll just buy one of these packets and just eat it straight out of the packet. 
beans. Oh yeah, as far as uh, beans, I would always go with black beans or red kidney beans. But I go with black beans because they're pretty high. I think they're the highest in fiber or closest to it and they're the lowest in carbs. And then I always go with the no salt added just because I'm getting a lot of sodium um, from the tuna and all this other packaged food that I eat. Uh, since we're on the subject, I'm going to talk about sodium. I really don't track sodium as long as you're getting your micronutrients in, as long as you're drinking more than a gallon of water a day, and as long as your sodium uh, consumption is consistent, you're really not going to notice a lot of water weight or a lot of bloatness. But if you have any medical issues, then I definitely advise you to you know, track your, your sodium if you have to. But other than that, um, don't worry about it too much. Just make sure you're consuming your micronutrients and being consistent with it. Another part of greens, canned greens, the only ones that I'll do is uh, cut green beans, either the French style or just the regular ones. Again, I get no soul added because if you don't, you're looking at almost 2,000 milligrams or two grams of sodium just in this one can. Salsa, if you don't make homemade salsa, another good one is paste. I wouldn't recommend the generic salsa in this category just because you can actually taste the difference versus the rice you really don't. Yeah, if you're trying to bulk up, which I recommend to a lot of high schoolers or people that are starting out, um, yeah, I recommend an easy carb source, which is either going to be rice, white rice, or pasta. If you're bulking, you're going to have to eat an excess amount of calories. So if you're eating an excess amount of calories, you're going to get your fiber from elsewhere. Um, make sure you're just not eating straight shit or junk. Um, hmm. So yeah, I'd go with the just regular pasta. Another thing, since we're on the subject, uh, I, a lot of people I hear that are cutting that are still in high school or still young, what I recommend doing is just bulk up. It necessarily doesn't have to be dirty, but even increasing your, your calories slightly. And if you're in the caloric surplus, uh, that's gonna you're gonna notice the biggest improvement there. Um, strength wise, size wise, and just pretty much any whatever your goals plan. are. Yeah, whatever your goals are, whatever your eating plans are, that's what I mean. It can be bulking or cutting. Whenever I'm bulking, I still say, oh, well, I'm following this diet and it's gonna be me gaining weight. So for me, at least, a diet doesn't necessarily mean shredding up or you know losing weight. Well, parents, again, if you're a hard gainer, this is for people who are trying to gain weight, bulk up, uh, skinny, like really, really skinny people. Pop-Tarts are really, really, probably the easiest calories that you can get. Not only that, I mean, they have a variety of flavors as you can see. As far as these, I know a lot of people who are trying to lose weight, a lot of girls, they go to these thinking, you know, oh, they're gonna be really healthy, I can eat this, and like lose weight. Um, not necessarily, it's pretty, Usually they're gonna be five to seven grams of fat and like 20 carbs or more, and a few grams of protein. Honestly, um, if you just cook some chicken or even some make some tuna or salmon, uh, put that in a big salad and it would actually fill you up. Uh, the fiber one little things, little snacks are the ones that I would recommend. Even though they're really, really small, they do carry fiber. And that's gonna, if you drink a lot of water, uh, I do, I drink probably two gallons to a gallon and a half a day. Uh, fiber will fill you up if you consume a lot of water with it. I stick with the generic old fashioned oats. I honestly don't see or don't taste the difference in old in the Great Valley versus the Quaker oats. And not only that, you're saving yourself about a dollar. And it's the same size, same thing pretty much. And I honestly don't notice the taste. But you need fiber in your diet and there's different ways of getting fiber. So you can go the oats, you can go the quinoa way. There's just different variety of carbohydrates and fiber that you can take for the day. You don't have to specifically stick to one sort. Another good thing is cream of wheat, which I kind of substituted for some time. Because uh, oats in the morning, I don't know, for some reason it would get me tired and sometimes it would bloat me up. So usually I'll just have it for dinner if I'm not going anywhere, uh, just so I can be full and I won't be hungry pretty much. This was back when I was dieting. So I would substitute to cream of wheat or cream of rice. I would try to aim for cream of rice because I believe that doesn't have any fiber versus cream of wheat, it does. Uh, but regardless, both of them, um, they don't bloat me up as much as the Quaker oats or the quick oats. Um, if you're eating oats and you do notice yourself getting bloated or just tired, 
Uh, I recommend substituting them with cream of wheat or cream of rice. It has a different texture to it, but they're again they're easy carbs, and for me they're filling. In terms of the syrup, I do recommend this brand or the Miss Buttersworth. Both of them are really good. This one's a little bit more thicker, but this one I feel like it has it's sweeter. It has a maple taste to it. I would recommend this if you eat your your oatmeal plain. I usually put a, pro, a protein scoop in my oatmeal, so I'm good. Um, but sometimes, whenever my protein needs are already met, and I just want to eat oatmeal, or I just need to eat oatmeal, or cream of wheat, whatever, I'll just put some, I'll drizzle some of this sugar-free syrup, and it tastes just like the real thing. Uh, if you're not using your scale, if you're not weighing out your food, uh, I recommend you to do so if you're eating cereal, because you'll be surprised how much a serving of cereal is. It's pretty much like less than half a handful. So if you're not weighing it out or if you're not at least using the measuring cup, I recommend to do so because if you're only tracking or thinking that you're eating one serving of cereal, you're most likely not. You're probably eating two or maybe two and a half servings of cereal, which is, you know, roughly 40 to 50 carbs. People, what I, you know, do myself is I don't track my sugar. Um, it's pretty much like an extract of carbs. So, I mean, if you're consuming carbs, you're going to be consuming sugar. Don't really keep track of it. If you're eating, you know, 80% of your carbs and they're coming from sugar, I mean, it really doesn't matter. Just make sure, like I said, you're getting your micronutrients in. Um, you're drinking a lot of water. I don't recommend eating, you know, getting all your carbs from sugar. But, I mean, if that's the case, well, you know, so be it. Don't worry too much about it. Sugar is not going to get you fat. What gets you fat is eating the excess amount of calories, being in the caloric surplus. That's the only way you're going to get, uh, that's the only way you're going to, gain weight, you get fat. Um, what I tell people, it's uh, calories in versus calories out and then macros come into play. Uh, I feel like macros really give you a good uh, or bad body composition versus calories is gonna determine whether you lose weight or gain weight. Chili fixings. A lot of you guys might do the bags of rice. Um, you guys can, if you guys have a rice cooker that might be more convenient to you or just a big ass pot. But what I do, um, I do these bags of rice just because I find it like it's convenient for me. Um, I'll make three to four bags at a time, which is the entire box. Another kind of beans that I recommend are lentils. Um, really good in volume and really low calories, really high in fiber, and they do carry some protein in them. I probably recommend these uh, other than the black beans, or opposed to the black beans, because again, they're lower in calories and stuff like that, and you get a lot of volume in them. And you can add these to salads. I like adding it to my rice, but keep in mind that both, if you're not doing rice, you can add it to a salad or maybe just lentils and uh, chicken or lentils and tuna, whatever the case may be. So give it a try, it has a, has a different taste to it. Put a little crunch and munch. Carlos, did you want to talk about? Uh, oh, yeah, you, you want really to get it in depth? Make sure the double fly. Honestly, so I'll just I'll cut the chicken in half and then I'll bake it. Uh, that's my way of doing it because I find it a little bit more convenient and I'll just be, uh, I guess, packing it throughout the week. Uh, I'll try not to cook so much of it or I'll try to consume it before the week ends because I guess the more you hold on to your chicken, the, it'll go bad. Personally, I mean, I'll just eat it like that by itself, I guess, with some rice or at times I'll make a bowl of rice and then throw pieces of chicken in there. Uh, maybe. Um, to a sandwich, anything just to get, I guess, the protein uh, source there. A lot of people might get confused with boneless chicken thighs versus chicken breast. Um, thing is, boneless chicken thighs, it's gonna be a little bit more greasier, which doesn't really matter, but it does carry a little bit more fat. That's probably why it's a little bit more greasier. I personally don't like chicken thighs. I know some people do. The ground turkey beef, really good. You can make that with uh, eggs, egg whites. Uh, I like doing hamburgers with it. You can get 97.7 ground beef, or you can even get 97.3 uh, with 7 lean and 3% fat. Um, I wouldn't go anything below 93 lean, just because the 93 lean uh, per 4 ounces, you're getting 8 grams of fat. And typically whenever you're dieting, you know, you want to watch your fats just because they're higher in calories. What about turkey bacon? 
turkey bacon, uh, good if you like bacon. I personally don't like bacon, so I don't use it. But again, it's a really, really good substitute. Yeah, you can get creative. You can, you know, use it as a side uh, to your sandwiches, or you can, you know, put it in your eggs, in your scrambled eggs, whatever the case may be. You can make little McMuffins. Uh, just get creative. I mean, anything you see uh, on TV or on the menu or whatever, there's always a healthier option that you can create on your own. Afraid to switch it up because I mean that's the only thing that keeps you going is constant changing up the food, being different. If you stay with the same meal all day every day, you're gonna lose motivation. Because if you keep going with it, you do get more creative with it. You <laughs> you'll tend to see stuff around and or like on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Marco cracking over the back. Oh man. That should have been like. Oh, didn't see that. Oh, hey. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> but like I was saying, I guess you get more creative with it as you go. Uh, at first, like when I personally, I first started, I would just go basically what was instructed by me, and uh, basically some uh, plain meals, but with a little bit of flavor. And I guess as the the more you go, you experiment with it. If you're a big fan of omelets, I'm pretty sure you like cheese in your omelets. So something I recommend is getting reduced fat cheese, a shredded cheese. A mozzarella is really good. Um, I would recommend the fat free cheese. The thing is, it's not gonna melt very good. So I go with the reduced fat. Um, I'll save my fats throughout the day, uh, just so I can enjoy that. When you want meals already prepped, you just go ahead and grab these. These are all really these good. People, all these people are paying like, you know, seven or eight dollars for prepped meals. You can get this for one dollar and sixty-eight cents. Yeah. This is where it's hot, guys. How can this you is... beat that? Look at those macros, insane. <laughs> Uh, did you want to look over there or what? Oh, what? Are you getting my face? The thing about yogurts, I know some of these generic yogurts, uh, they do carry better macronutrients. They'll be less in carbs and higher in protein. Not, not only that, they're not very expensive and they're a little bit filling. I mean, you're getting pretty high volume for only 100 calories. Um, if you really want good volume, this one cup, which is uh, about 230 grams of Greek yogurt, and you're getting 11 carbs. 22 grams of protein. Uh, if you eat it by itself, it's gonna taste really plain, almost like sour cream. So I do recommend doing some like Walden Farm syrup, which is some zero calorie uh, syrup, which we don't sell here anymore. Or you can add sugar-free syrup. You can break down some rice cakes, you know, like again, get uh, creative with it. But you can actually add uh, your protein scoop in it, or a scoop of protein, sorry, inside your yogurt. Not only that, um, It'll be a high calorie, sorry, high protein meal. I used to do one cup of Greek yogurt, uh, frozen strawberries, and I would add a scoop of protein into that, and I'll take that in a big Tupperware. I'll take that to work really high volume, really good. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. 2% milk, guys. The way to go. Or would you go with just regular eggs? I go regular eggs, to be honest. I taste it organic. I really don't taste the difference, to be honest. I mean, it's going to be, you know, on the pan. So, I go with the large. It's grade A eggs. Another thing is, uh, these biscuits, they are tasty, and they're really not that bad. You're only looking at 170 calories for one biscuit. And the biscuits are pretty medium size. Um, they are pretty filling. 6 grams of fat, 25 carbs, 3 grams of protein. So you can honestly have one with breakfast with a side of turkey bacon, um, some egg whites. Um, since you're already getting some fats from here, I mean, I wouldn't want to do eggs. I'll do egg whites. But again, if you are tra tracking your macros, if you are keeping track of your foods, you can honestly eat the eggs, eat this, eat the turkey bacon, as long as you track everything, and as long as you don't go over your fats at the end of the day. Cinnamon rolls. Um, again, they're not as big as the other ones, but you're looking at one roll is only 140 calories, 4.5 grams of fat, 23 carbs, 2 grams of protein, and they're really, really good. Um, so don't be afraid of eating this stuff. I know people are going to label it as bad food or unhealthy food, but you can still lose weight while eating all this bad food. Popcorn, which I which one I do recommend, Skinny Girl Popcorn. Really, really good tasting. Not only that, you're looking at like 90 calories per bag. Uh, mind you, the bags are honey. This has 40 calories per slice. 
really good if you like eating sandwiches or if you're gonna make a peanut butter jelly sandwich, ham sandwich. What I personally use it for is French toast. I use that sugar-free syrup that I showed you guys earlier. I do about four slices of bread. That's gonna be under 200 calories cakes, uh, as I did mention before. Really good snack. They're not very filling, but again, you can do so much with it. You can put peanut butter on top of them. You can put yogurt you can put them in your yogurt sorry you can break them up in little pieces you can put them in your oatmeal you can eat it with uh, while you're drinking your protein shake just so much you can do with it um, not only that they taste great and they kind of take the candy craving um, away from you if you have that not only that they're two dollars for 14 rice cakes so you're getting quite a few rice cakes. Yeah,